Hello, I'm John Guy, and I've written a book on the children of Henry VIII. I've got the idea for this book. It was actually while I was doing something for Japanese TV, and they showed me the well-known portrait of Henry with his children and Jane Seymour, which was done in 1544, a family group portrait. And of course, it's pure spin. It's not a fake, but it's spin, because Henry was hardly ever with his three surviving children. And the woman in the picture is Jane Seymour, who at the time the painting was done had been dead for seven years. Uh, the idea that Henry had some sort of nuclear family has come down to us in history, but, but it's, 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 it's utterly false. Uh, the other thing that prompted me was I was going round a manor house in Buckinghamshire and they said, oh, in July 1534, Henry had gone there with Anne Boleyn and the little Elizabeth in her arms. And of course, I knew that in that month, Anne Boleyn was having a miscarriage at Hampton Court, that, that Elizabeth was at Eltham and that Henry already had his eye on another woman. So the idea that this was a, a happy nuclear family, as it were, collecting their buckets and spades to go to the seaside seemed vaguely ridiculous. Henry actually had a very clear idea about what he wanted his family to do. They were to be the centrepiece of his succession programme whereby his dynasty would remain, as it were, for all time. Uh, for this, of course, he needed heirs to whom he could pass down the throne. And from the beginning, he was absolutely adamant that female rule was not for him. Female rule was not acceptable. And we know this because in 1531, he wrote the preface to a tract during his divorce campaign, in which he actually spells out the drawbacks of female rule. An unmarried female ruler would have to find a husband. That husband would either be a subject, and that would be a recipe Henry thought for civil war. Alternatively, she could marry a foreign prince, but that would mean that England would be sucked into foreign wars and possibly subsumed within some other great empire, for example, France or, or, or Spain. When Henry did come to settle the crown on his children, he made strict conditions uh, for the marriages of his two daughters, Mary uh, and, and Elizabeth. And if those conditions were not to be observed, then potentially they would be excluded from the succession. Uh, for Henry, illegitimacy was no bar, and that surprised me. It's really quite striking when you look at the sources with a fresh eye, because his first living son, Henry Fitzroy, who was illegitimate, uh, Fitzroy was, uh, her, his mother was uh, Bessie Blunt, one of Henry's early mistresses. Illegitimacy was no bar for, 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 for Henry, and in fact, we know from the education that Fitzroy received that he was very much being, he was very much part of Henry's succession plan. He was very much being trained up for possible future kingship, and it's actually rather striking. Fitzroy was born in 1519. Uh, Mary Tudor, Henry's uh, legitimate uh, first surviving child, was born in 1516. Their ages are, are quite simple. Mary was not given the education that Fitzroy was given, certainly in those early years, and arguably never. Uh, the other thing that um, we can really be quite uh, sure about uh, is that all Henry's children absolutely adored him and revered him, and they wished to preserve his legacy. But they were very different in how they set about this. They wanted to do this in quite radically different ways.